We're continuing the build of the Mini Avanti from Sebart USA and Gator RC. Welcome everybody back to Just Plain Crazy. I'm Brennan. Thanks for joining me again for another episode down in the lair. And we're continuing the build on the Mini Avanti from Gator RC and Sebart USA. My first turbine, let's pick up where we left off from the last episode. If you haven't seen that one yet, check that link. All right, so if we look up in the inside of here, you can see hopefully the tunnel up in there. We're gonna pull out of that fiberglass tunnel and then we're gonna come up through this hole and I'm gonna route around the backside and I'm gonna come out there so that way that helps support. So we're gonna come through here, wrap under, come out here and then over to the inside. So I'll show you what that looks like when we're all done. And then we're gonna put some of this uh, convolute over the top of it, <laughs> that stretchy snake stuff to protect it a little bit from chafing. So uh, three wires gotta go through that tunnel, let's do it. All right, so elevator wiring is done and you can see these locking connectors here will just be able to push in from the stabs and then they'll click into place. So I know they ain't going anywhere. Those will be easy to remove if need be. And then you can see what we did here on the inside. I used the zip tie just to hold that convolute up off of the fiberglass tube and that stuff is running there pretty nice and tight. Feel pretty good about all of that. So uh, let's get our rudder uh, put in and run. You can see that our hardwood blocks have all dried. So now we need to shave those. I put them in at perfect 90s and I'm just gonna shave a little bit off there in order to get the servo to fit. All right guys, now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to uh, poke some holes. So this piece fits in there nicely, and we're just going to drill some really small holes up in the very corner of this thing. All right, now I think I'm going to um, just get a little piece of wood to put on the back sides of those. All right, now in order to put these wood pieces in to have something to screw into, I'm just going to go ahead and tuck in a piece of wood there with my finger to make sure I'm back in the corner. Get some thin CA on a pipette and just let it wick right into there. All right guys, now that you have your elevator surfaces kind of put together, um, go ahead and install your elevator servos. You can see that those are already done in there. I just have my linkage rough hooked up for now. I was playing around with the size of the horns and what I wanted to do there. So those horns again are gonna come out. I have other ones. These are, <clears throat> again, for the 5087 Hi-Techs, I'm using these uh, Dubro 675 arms. They're 24 tooth, they come in a variety of colors. I opted for white ones, just cause that's what I wanted to put on there. Um, we're gonna have to drill this hole now through here, through uh, the tube, the carbon one. So I am using a two millimeter drill bit. If you want to, I found it easiest to use a flashlight so I could see through here, servo in, servo out, that's gonna be up to you. And we want to make sure that we drill, pre-drill holes through the tube. So we're going to keep the drill nice and straight, flat on the bench. I'm going to keep an eye on the inside here so I know that my drill bit's going through center of the tube. All right guys, now you should have an end that looks like that. Um, now I opted
to not use the hardware that came with this, these little screws. I'm using RTL fasteners, little socket heads there, um, just so I have a positive drive. I already know what I'm going to do with those, and I'm going to strip out those heads, especially as we go into the carbon. So um, let's go ahead and thread that into our surface. What I'm going to do as I put this rod back in is I'm going to use my drill bit again to know that I have all my holes lined up. That should fall all the way in that surface. If you're not lined up, it's not going to work. All right, now that that's lined up, I'm going to go ahead and install my screw. I'm going to thread that all the way in. Now let's uh, let's go ahead and get the other side set up. All right, now what we're going to do is just apply a little bit um, of hot glue, just enough to hold these wires away from the servo arm. So not a ton, just enough. All right, so here you guys can see there is the uh, connector body housing. They wanted that in this hole, but it comes too close to the servo arm. So I pulled it back out of there and I made a hole towards the aft end of the plane. So we're going to clip into there. It's going to be a nice positive lock. You can see the other end of that connector. We'll tuck it out here. So self-locking. So that'll clip in so there's no retainers needed. All right, now with this side already engaged and pinned in, your rod should be as far over as it can go here. Let's go ahead and drill that hole all the way down through. Try not to drill all the way through the plane. All right, now that you got the holes drilled, let's go ahead and thread in our hex-driven screws. Make sure they get nice and tight in there. And of course, as you did this, you know, you want to make sure that your stabs are pushed all the way in as you drill. You want them to help hold things together. All right, <clears throat> so those are all tightened up. And guys, that is our tail right now for the most part. Um, till we get our thrust tube in there and stuff, and we get our wiring done for our receiver, then we can start to hook those linkages up. But I don't want to hook any linkages up until I know all the servos are centered and stuff. I don't want nothing snapping back in. Normally I use a uh, servo tester to center everything but i've already changed the locks and the connector ends right the self-locking ones so we'll let it go for now all right guys let's talk about some interesting things here um it's time to start installing the exhaust tube on this this is a single wall pipe this is what comes in the kit just one piece of sheet metal um, dual wall is going to have a bunch of louvers around it and have another shield around to help retain the heat protect the plane from getting hot. A lot of people go with dual walls. Gromania is kind of the place to go to there. It's overseas. Could take a little bit to get your stuff. Um, could be on the expensive side for one pipe. But I wanted to use a lot of what came with this kit for the sake of using what comes with the kit. What comes with the kit are these two wooden spacers. They fit over this tube really well. And um, they're both the same exact size. So point of conversation with this is that um, I'd done some research before I started building this project, my first turbine, so a lot of learning experiences for me. And what I found out is that I've seen in quite a few posts um, in forums, and I'm not a big fan of forums because it's too hard to root through 400 pages for information, even using the search bars. And forums are typically overrun by a few strong personalities 
and whether they're really good people and really knowledgeable or they're just aggressive people by nature in those forums, that's what happens. So it's hard to get a word in otherwise. And uh, I'm building my plane the way I want to build my plane. And it's not that I don't listen to other people because I ask tons of questions and I learn from a lot of guys. But uh, I want to take a little bit of everything that I've seen, heard, and been told and kind of incorporate it in what I do. And that's what I do. Um, and I, I think my record of having planes for a long time kind of stands for that. And, uh, you know, you can look at it this way. I can build an expensive plane uh, once or I can build two expensive, expensive planes twice. And uh, so with that being said, I don't know why in the forums I've seen other people post pictures of these that were burned. I don't really care to know. It could have been that they torture their jet. It's always at max thrust, produces a lot of heat, gets really hot, burns them. Or maybe it's just that the thing's not set up right. Maybe it was uh, wrong fuel. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really care to debate that. All I know is that these things fit over the pipe really well. But over the sleeve that comes with it, you will find that... They fall down here, but yet they will stop on the rear side. So what holds there essentially doesn't hold in here at all. They're different sizes. So that means I got to fill that thing with a good amount of epoxy. Is that the way it's designed? Is that the sleeve, the way it was made? Again, I don't know. So I recruited my buddy Ronnie London and his engineering prowess and um, he's actually got a really cool carf project going and we talk a lot and I appreciate his wisdom. So I said, hey, listen, I'm thinking of designing new rings that, you know, we could insulate with something. What are you thinking? And some ideas went back and forth and he designed me some cool carbon rings that have airflow through them and they use silicone tubing. Now, this isn't rocket science, right? This is kind of the exact same setup they use for canisters for the most part, right? But he can understand drawing and dimensions and everything else. So he drew me up two of these that are different sizes. One is slightly bigger than the other. So I will have an inlet or an outlet. Now they want you in the instructions to go ahead and measure in the outlet side of the tube or just one side of the tube. I took the small one. 10 millimeters in and then that's where our one ring is going to go and sit in there. So that one's going to sit just about at the end of this sleeve. The other one is sized so it fits really well up on this end of the sleeve. So now I will have complete support of this tube all the way through. Now this tube for the kit with a Zykoi 45 is barely, barely long enough. You need one inch from the back of the turbine to basically the start of the tube. Okay, so a little bit has to sit in there. It's one inch. So I built myself a spacer to place in the inside of there. And basically when I set my turbine in there, that tail cone will just touch the end of this thing for spacing. And what I've also discovered is that these arms included in there aren't near long enough. So what I did is I went ahead and I got some uh, half inch wide aluminum stripping. I'll cut that. I'll just cut to the video to show you. And we're going to bend the tabs over and I'm going to make my own arms so they're a little longer. So I could still have these supported on the former uh, on the inside of the plane. I have good support and airflow through here to keep the temperature down. And I never have to worry, guys, over how many flights this ever start in a wiggle, move. Doesn't matter. I mean, everybody can choose to do their own things. I'm choosing, I wanna glue all this stuff in one time and be done. And then I can report to you guys. So um, if it's something you're interested in, do me a favor, um, hit me up. I'll put the email down in the link below. So you guys, if you're building one and you're interested in them rings, I'll get you hooked up um, with the right source for that. So with that being said, uh, for you guys, I think it's a better mousetrap. I think it's going to better suit me. I like the idea and the concept, and I'm willing to try things. Uh, and we're going to do that with several different things in this jet uh, because I want to build it the way I want to build it. And uh, with that being said, it doesn't create weight, and it doesn't create a hassle or a mess or anything else for me that I have to deal with. I see no adverse effects of choosing to do what I want to do. And also, it will always have just a little bit of support and tension on here. Uh, vibration, dampening, that type of stuff, but always, regardless of heat, hold it right in the spot and never burn through. So with that being said, um, let's get this lined up in the inside of here and true. 
10 millimeters in, we're gonna epoxy that one. We're gonna square this one up on the end. We're gonna epoxy the inside of that. We're gonna let this cure overnight and we're gonna get this installed in the back of the jet. We're gonna get our tube arms bent and we're gonna get this thing installed. And then guys, it's time to make turbine brackets. We've gone ahead and we've marked the back of this thrust tube cover rear and we're going to take our micrometer and we are going to go to 10 millimeters as described in the book. And I'm going to assume at this point, this is where they want the ring. We'll see. So I'm just going to make a bunch of marks. 10 mil in all the way around. And we'll see if this rear ring will fit in there. And I may have to sand this down just a little bit. All right, guys, uh, rings are epoxied in. We're going to let that cure overnight. We put our tube in there to make sure everything's in line, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, so they wanted us earlier to measure. Uh, let's see if I can get this where we have some light. You can see those little dotted lines around the fiberglass insert right there. They wanted the thrust tube even with that, which means the fiberglass thing is just inset from... The end of the fuselage and you could see that i position my ring so that that tube is 10 mil in from this edge to the thrust tube and then probably about 25 total millimeters in are my silicone rings so that thing really supports that thrust tube nicely it's not going to move um, you could see that we have our rough mount now inside that's all centered up our turbine is going to come out of there so it's not flopping around those were just trial mounts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to template those into some bigger carbon fiber ones to go out here and still try to utilize those fixed mounts um, like they have right there or the fixed T-nuts on the back side. So anyway, um, that's that as far as mounting. So that went about as good as we it could possibly have gone. Now the thing that I have to do is I am going to have to take this insert out, take the tube out, take the insert out, and then epoxy up the inside of that thing to hold that thing into place. Before I do that, um, here's the other thing that you guys have to be aware of. When you go to slide this horizontal tube or this horizontal stab in right now, we're gonna slide that thing in and you'll see it's not going. That thing, although it's hard to see up in there, um, hits this fiberglass tube. So what I'm going to have to do is go in there and mark it. And uh, I thought about just compressing it down and sliding this in, but then you always got pressure and rubbing there. So I think what I'm gonna do is now that I know all my measurements are right, I'm going to mark this at each end and I'm gonna notch it straight through. So let's get to it. All right guys, sleeve is out. I roughed that up just using a rough tool. I don't know if you could see that. Harbor Freight file set. Let's just go ahead and I am going to just rough up a channel right there. Now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna scuff up the outside of this ring. We've scuffed up that ring and we're gonna put epoxy around the ring, get this set into place, get our horizontal set into place, like I said, put our thrust tube and let it all dry. All right, stab is through. 
you can see up in there now. See how that kind of just notches right through? I love it. Looks good. Let's uh, let's get this prepped and get this ring epoxied in place. Get our turbine centered and everything's just going to sit in its position while it dries. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut off uh, two of these strips so we can make our brackets. All right guys, for the thrust tube placement, I got my brackets that we drilled hung on there and I got this thing set into place. I used a spacer plug that goes all the way up into the inside of that thing. Let me show you, I'll stick that in there. So with that in there, we're going to go ahead and set in our turbine. I know that a lot of guys ask, me included, um, how far do you set that bell, the backside of the bell here, so you could see the backside, how far should that be away from the cone? Well, on this model, it's one inch. So what I did is I ax, uh, actually went ahead and made a one inch spacer just to put in there. So I know when I slide my turbine back all the way, it hits that thrust tube. Now, if we take the turbine out and we take this spacer out <clears throat> how do you know that the tube is centered so we're going to go ahead and we're going to place our turbine in there where it's supposed to be we got our tube where it's supposed to be the nice part about those mounts with the silicone it's going to hold everything and support it and we are just going to look right up the backside and we're going to adjust it. So if it's centered, center to centered. It don't need to be more difficult than that. And we're going to come over here and then I position my arms and I drilled holes. So that should be exactly where I want it. And we're going to go ahead and drill into the former. We're going to put some screws in there, snug things up, make sure that stuff slides together and sits right. And then the turbine, how do I know that this thing is going to be completely centered? We use a laser and I'll show you guys that and run it from the tip of the nose all the way through here, catching the turbine and up the tail. So then we can position the front and the aft because we know exactly where center is. All right, here you go. Leveling laser on a stand up over the nose front of the turbine over the top of the turbine and then right up that tail so now you know that your turbine is absolutely straight in there and you can make sure your thrust tube is perfect all right guys we got our turbine position in there where i want it what i am going to do now is make a new mount out of some carbon fiber plate like this stuff we have to cut it but i need a template to cover both of those pieces. So what I'm going to do is just take a piece of aluminum foil and we're gonna press that in there and we're gonna use it because it's gonna conform really well to all the little nooks, crannies, holes, circle patterns, things like that. And then we're gonna use that as a template or an overlay To cut the pattern out of our carbon so use your fingers push down on this this will get you all your little nooks and crannies holes things like that so there you guys can see how the outline conforms hopefully it comes through on the camera to all the bolts and then all those creases will just cut around there now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to cut this out
Now we're just gonna go ahead and lay out our template on our carbon fiber. We're gonna mark around it and we're gonna cut it. All right, there you can see we have one side uh, just put in enough that we can go ahead and put a screw and tighten it down. Uh, again, we're going to check all of our centering, but let's make the other one. All right, guys, and there you have it. That's a wrap for now, only because we all have very short attention spans. So I'm Brendan. This is Just Plain Crazy. This is the Mini Avanti from Sebart USA and Gator RC. Do me a favor, link down in the description below or check them out over at www.gator-rc.com. Huge supply of, especially in the Mini Series, the Mini Avanti in tons of different colors. They have a BAE Hawk in this size, lots of different models. And if you're into the bigger and you got a nice paved runway and you're expanding that inventory, they got a nice supply of top RC models, Seagulls models, all kinds of stuff. So do me a favor, go on over and check them out. With that being said, if you liked what you just saw, smash that thumbs up button. It helps us out a lot. Like, share, subscribe, all that cool shameless plug stuff. Don't forget to check us out on the official Facebook and Instagram Just Playing Crazy pages. So with that, again, I'm Brendan. This is Just Playing Crazy. You're Just Playing Crazy for always hanging out and watching me. I appreciate every one of you. Till the next episode, I wish you guys happy flights. Peace out.